Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. So we are in the last session of this day, uh, of this week, I mean. Uh, we are going to begin with uh, the topic that we are going to develop today. Um, we are ending this week number three, so we are just going to work um, three more days the next week. So we are going to end the uh, module that we are developing right now. <clears throat> Vamos a terminar lo que es el módulo eh, la próxima semana. Esta ya es la semana número tres. La próxima semana, pues, eh, ya estamos terminando con lo que son los, los temas. Así que vamos a empezar con la sección número cinco. Vamos a terminar los temas que tenemos en la sección número cinco. <coughs> El día lunes y martes estaríamos terminando todo, eh, todos los temas de esa sección y todos los knowledge check. Y el miércoles, que es el último día en el que vamos a estar trabajando, vamos a desarrollar the midterm. Vamos a hacer el examen final. So, the next week we are going to develop the eh, last exam about the course and we are going to be done with all the work and information that we have on the platform for this course. Así que la próxima semana vamos a estar terminando eh, lo que son los temas de la plataforma de la um, de la sección número 5 y también vamos a estar terminando con el examen final. Um, now we are going to talk about um, season and sports. We are going to see this uh, topic. And this one is a vocabulary. So we are going to construct new information related to, to sports and also related to uh, different seasons that we have through the year. Uh, we are going to construct, we are going to see uh, different sports, different kind of sports. We are going to see the vocabulary. And also we are going to make an exercise related to, to sports. Then we are going to see some uh, words that we can use to talk about seasons. Um, <laughs> this is not just to talk about uh, the four seasons that we have on uh, the four main words. I mean, the main four words related to seasons, but also to uh, see what kind of words we can use to uh, express our ideas related to the seasons. Así que vamos a ver dos temas. Uno es el de las um, estaciones del año. Vamos a ver cuáles son las estaciones, que eh, es un vocabulario bastante sencillo, pero que conocemos las cuatro estaciones, pero también vamos a ver vocabulario que se puede utilizar para hablar de estas estaciones. También eh, vamos a hablar de eh, los deportes. So we are going to, um, to see a vocabulary kind of extense, kind of big, but not too complicated. Va a ser un poco largo, pero no tan complicado, que es un vocabulario sobre deportes. Y vamos a tener un par de ejercicios relacionados con, eh, <coughs> I'm sorry, con uh, esa parte. And then we are going to see a video uh, on the platform that is related to the WH questions, but in simple present. And also a conversation that is uh, related to the topic sports. And the last thing that we are going to do is to do a knowledge check. Así que vamos a tener un par de cositas por ahí, dos vocabularios, unos ejercicios, un audio, eh, una conversación y un knowledge check. Y eso sería como la agenda para hoy. So we are going to begin with the topic 
So we're going to create the first vocabulary. Um, we are going to begin uh, talking about sports. So let me share the document in which we're going to work uh, right now. So we're going to talk about season sports, but I uh, want to begin with sports. Vamos a comenzar con los deportes. Uh, we're going to see, I think, um, one, two, three, like three different kind of uh, vocabulary. Vamos a ver tres eh, vocabularios diferentes relacionados con deportes, ya que los vamos a dividir según el <coughs> la forma, ¿verdad?, en la que se realizan estos deportes. We are going to begin with uh, knowing that uh, some information, some general information. In this case, in English speaking uh, countries, sports are uh, will love us time and when you speak it with English speakers, it is likely that the subject will come up frequently. In this case, it is important for you to be able to recognize and discuss the various types of sports. Um, now in this sport vocabulary will also benefit you in the workplace, especially if you work in an industry where sports are a focus on well as being used uh, at school when talking part in physical education. Este es un vocabulario super necesario, ya que en los países de habla inglesa, o sea, los países que hablan inglés, los deportes son como uno de los temas principales. Eh, entonces es como uno de los temas de conversación que sí o sí tenemos que tener con alguna persona que vive en un país donde se habla inglés. Entonces tenemos que tener conocimiento de los diferentes tipos de deportes para poder hablar, ¿verdad? Y decir, mencionar algunos de los deportes más comunes. So, in this case, uh, it said that the sports are usually governed by a set of rules or customs which serve to ensure fair competition and allow consistent adjudication of the winner. Los deportes, ¿verdad? Usualmente están eh, gobernados por una serie de reglas y costumbres que sirven, ¿verdad? Para que la competencia sea, uh, podemos decirla, uh, que no haya ningún tipo de desacuerdo, ¿verdad? Ni nada ilegal y que le eh, permita una adjudicación al ganador. So, we are going to begin with the first vocabulary that are games and sports. And in this case, it is a list of sports and games in English. Vamos a comenzar con una lista de deportes y juegos en inglés. So, we are going to... Uh, write the vocabulary. Voy a escribir todos los... Um, uh, the sports, I mean, the sports and games. And then <coughs> you are going to see an image. Luego de escribir el listado, para ir viendo los nombres, vamos a ver una imagen donde están esos eh, deportes para que vayamos viendo, ¿verdad? La imagen gráfica de cuáles son esos deportes. So, we are going to begin with this list. I mean, the first one is list of sports. and uh, games. And we are going to see the list. Vamos a ver cuáles son los eh, deportes y juegos que aparecen acá. So we have archery. Then we have badminton. Cricket. Bowling. Boxing, curling, <laughs> tennis, skateboarding, surfing, hockey, figure skating. Yoga, 
fencing, fitness, gymnastic, karate, volleyball, weightlifting, basketball, <laughs> baseball, rugby, wrestling, <laughs> high jumping, hard gliding, Car racing, cycling, running, table tennis, <coughs> fishing, judo, I mean, Climbing, billiards, or pools, or pool, shooting, horse racing, horseback riding. Golf, I mean, is the next one like this. And soccer. So we have this list of uh, sports that we have here that are sports and games. We have uh, some words, but now uh, we are going to see the image in which we can illustrate all the information that we have on this list. So, <laughs> This one is sport and games. So I need to take this one, eliminate this one, and because we have three different, this is extreme sports. Let me move this one to here. And I'm going to move this one to next here. So this one is the first image that we need. So, in this list, you have the different um, sports and games that we are seeing on the list. Aquí está la imagen de las palabras que estamos utilizando en esta primera lista. So, the first one is archery. Ahí estamos hablando de ar el uso del arco, ¿verdad? Eh, que es un deporte. Tenemos el badminton, el cricket, el, el bowling. Tenemos el boxeo. Then we have a curling. That in this case is, in the image, it's kind of funny because uh, you can see someone that is doing like <coughs> um, something uh, different. Eh, se ve como algo diferente en el de calling porque pareciera como que si estuviera eh, haciendo la limpieza, ¿no? But it is not because we are talking about an, an, a sport or something like that. So, <coughs> in this case, a uh, calling. Um, we can say like uh, it it has to be with uh, something different that maybe we don't know exactly um, what this sport is, but it has to be like in español se dice como curling es um, se parece como a los bolos, pero este es un uh, deporte de equipo. Eh, donde tienen unas bolas, son unas bolas, eh, y un bastón, se puede decir como un bastón, 
y que se practique en una pista de hielo. No es como el hockey, porque eh, el balón es bastante grande, el que utilizan para jugar. Y se... I don't know, it's kind of weird. Es diferente a lo que ya hemos visto, pero es un deporte eh, que se practica en otros países. <laughs> Then we have tennis, skateboarding, es patinar, ¿verdad? Andar en patineta. Surfear, tenemos el hockey, figure skating, que es el, 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 um, el patinaje, ¿verdad? Artístico. Eh, tenemos yoga también, fencing, que es este deporte, ¿verdad? Bastante, uh, like, <coughs> it has uh, something kind of, I don't know, like, royal. Um, es el esgrima, ¿verdad? Es un deporte bastante, uh, se puede decir bastante serio, bastante, tiene como su, su característica, ¿verdad? Then tenemos fitness, que aquí entran diferentes tipos de ejercicios que se pueden hacer. Eh, tenemos gimnasia, tenemos karate, tenemos voleibol, tenemos el levantamiento de pesas, tenemos básquetbol, eh, tenemos <coughs> béisbol, tenemos también el rugby. Eh, que son eh, deportes que sí ya hemos visto. El, el rugby ahora está tomando como bastante eh, auge, es un deporte bastante popular eh, en estos días. Eh, así que es un, un deporte bastante bueno. Tenemos también como el wrestling, que es esta lucha, eh, donde se ve el, 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 la fortaleza de cada uno de los participantes. Eh, tenemos el high jumping, que es este salto, ¿verdad?, eh, que es, uh, it can be um, a little bit complicated because you know that it has uh, something kind of dangerous with this sport. Um, but it is like very uh, interesting, que es el salto de altura. Luego tenemos eh, deportes que ya tienen que ver, ¿verdad? Con eh, hacer cosas en el aire, like the... <laughs> the high uh, gliding that is like uh, we can say it un tipo de de deporte es un a la delta that is a, um, un deporte aéreo o una actividad recreativa por eso entran los deportes y los juegos <laughs> porque puede ser tomada como un deporte pero también puede ser tomada como un juego eh, then we have car racing, que son las carreras, eh, ciclismo, tenemos también eh, eh, las carreras, ¿verdad? Eh, sin necesidad de, uh, de utilizar algún tipo de, de material so, en, en la marcha, ¿verdad? Then we have table tennis, que es el tenis de mesa, tenemos la pesca, el judo, eh, el escalar, ¿verdad? Tenemos también el billar, eh, tenemos también esos deportes de, de disparo, ¿verdad? Then we have horse racing, que son las carreras de caballo, horseback riding, que son aquí ya en este caso es más que todo, ¿verdad? Pasar una serie de, <coughs> eh, de pruebas junto con el caballo para demostrar, ¿verdad? La habilidad tanto del jinete como del caballo. Then we have golf and tenemos el fútbol o balompié, como nosotros lo conocemos, que es el, el fútbol en UK, en soccer en US, en Australia. <coughs> so, that is the first uh, vocabulary. Aquí está la imagen, donde ustedes pueden ir viendo cada uno de los deportes. Ahí está su imagen gráfica. Now, we are going to see the second one. Vamos a ver cuál es el segundo. Because this one is sports and games, son deportes, pero también pueden ser considerados como un juego, no tanto algo muy serio, así como exactamente para una competición, sino que también puede tomarse eh, como algo de recreación. <coughs> Then we are going to see the extreme sports. Vamos a ver el listado de deportes extremos. So we are going to see 
the list first and then we're going to see the image. The same with this one. Vamos a ver primero la lista y luego vamos a ver la imagen. That is this one, I think. Yes, it's this one. So, extreme sports. Deportes extremos. We're going to see what are those uh, extreme sports. We have the first one, aggressive inline skating. <laughs> Then we have base jumping. Bungee jumping. Free climbing. Bouldering. Sandboarding. Motocross, mountain biking, <laughs> rock climbing, mountaineering, hand gliding, Skydiving. Paragliding. <laughs> Stand eating. Ian. Scuba diving. What is skin and a skateboarding? So in this case, we have less words than in the first one. Tenemos eh, menos menos palabras que en la primera. En este caso, uh, vemos cuáles son los deportes extremos. Vamos a ver acá la imagen en el cual nos está mostrando estos deportes. So, we have here the different extreme sports. So, we are going to see. And I think like this. Okay, give me a second. I'm going to like this. So, we have aggressive inline skating, que es este tipo de, de patinaje donde son bastante eh, agresivos porque... No es porque se peleen o algo por el estilo, sino que van, ¿verdad? En, su, en sus cosas y el que se atraviese. <coughs> Then we have base jumping. Ahí tenemos las imágenes para irnos haciendo una idea de cuál es el, el tipo de deporte, ¿verdad? O a qué se refiere cada uno de los deportes, que es como um, este tipo de salto que se hace... Eh, desde alguna superficie que, pues, obviamente eh, uh, es bastante atrevido, eh, bastante um, riesgoso, ¿verdad? Porque en este caso, si es al mar, um, no se sabe, ¿verdad? Qué tipo de impacto puede llegar a tener. Um, se salta desde cierta altura a... Um, en muchos de los casos puede llegar a utilizar paracaídas, pero en otros casos no se utiliza, entonces ahí está lo extremo. <coughs> Then we have the eh, bungee jumping, que es el salto de bungee, que también es bastante extremo, porque puede salir mal o puede salir bien. We don't know. Eh, free climbing es um, subir, ¿verdad? A veces sin... Uh, 
algún tipo de, de equipo, ¿verdad? Entonces, esto es escalar sin llevar equipos. So, that's why it's free climbing. Then we have the bouldering, que también es esta como parte de escalar, pero esta es en una pared. Sí es cierto que tiene sus medidas de seguridad y todo, pero no se lleva arnés ni nada por el estilo. Then we have the sandboarding, que es uh, llevar una tabla como la de nieve, pero en la arena. Motocross, ya sabemos, ¿verdad? Es este deporte en motocicletas que es bastante extremo. Eh, mountain biking, es eh, el ciclismo de montaña. El rock climbing, que es... Um, <coughs> The same thing is like uh, escalar, pero rocas. Este sí puede llevar um, different kind of equipment, diferentes e equipos para eh, no dañarse o puede ser free, like in the free climbing. Mountaineering es hacer montañismo. Eh, the hand gliding, ya decíamos, el ala delta. Skydiving, pues saltamos, ¿verdad? De paracaídas. Eh, Solo que es como kind of different in this case. It's like um, kind of fast. But in this case, like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of different than the paragliding. Porque el, <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, and the uh, skydiving is like you have a, very specific um, equipment that you can uh, use to um, be safe. And in paragliding is el, el parapente. It's kind of fast and you can lose your track very fast. Um, then we have the next one that you can see and the image is like using those kind of Uh, elements that you can use in the sky uh, sports but in this case you are using sand <coughs> es como hacer sort we can say that kind of um, but in this case you are not using Uh, water, in this case you are using sand. Este es un otro deporte, ¿verdad? Que se utiliza en, uh, o lo pueden hacer en arena, solo que aquí se puede llevar una tabla eh, o algún otro elemento y es impulsado por el viento. Then we have the skiing, que es el, el, el esquiar, ¿verdad? En, en nieve. Scuba diving, it cannot be like, or maybe you can think that it is not like very dangerous, but At the end, it could be. El scuba diving no se ve muy peligroso, ¿verdad? Que es el, <coughs> el ir a los arrecifes de coral, eh, hacer surfeo ahí en... I mean, it is not surfing. I'm sorry. Um, es, ¿verdad? Bucear. That is the word. Es bucear en, super, en, en lugares que no son muy profundos, eh, donde no hay tanto peligro, pero obviamente tiene su... Eh, tiene sus cosas, ¿verdad? Podemos pasar algunas situaciones que lo hacen riesgoso. Then we have the water skiing, es hacer esquí acuático. And then we have the skateboarding, que es el andar en patineta. So those are extreme sports that we have here. Eh, we have these examples and elements eh, related to the extreme sports. And then we are going to see the last... Eh, Vocabulary, vamos a ver el último de los vocabularios de los sports. And in this case, is related to, <coughs> let me see, we're going to see here. Sport and exercise actions, that is this one. But I don't know why I have the same thing here. Let me move this one. Because I have the image here. So in here we have the sport and exercise actions. 
Aquí tenemos algunos eh, deportes y acciones, ¿verdad? Que se hacen en el ejercicio. And um, we can say like we have different verbs that we can use to express things in uh, sport and exercise. Estos son verbos que utilizamos en el tema de los deportes. So in this case, we have walk, que es caminar, run, correr, stretch, es um, um, estirarse, ¿verdad? Es, estirar, jump, saltar, bones, que es rebotar, kneel, que es como ponerse de rodillas, <coughs> um, we have a band in that case, um, that you can see, um, es doblar, es llegar a cierta eh, posición, sit, sentarse, lie down, es acostarse o eh, tirarse, ¿verdad? En la superficie. Serve, que es como servir, ¿verdad? En, entregar. Ride, es... Eh, eh, we can say like montar, conducir, eh, kick, patear, hop, es como dar pequeños saltos. <risa> Skip es como saltar, omitir, pasar. Then we have pass, que este sí ya es un pase de un lugar a otro. Throw, que es tirar. Hit, golpear. Catch, atrapar. Shoot, lanzar. And the last one that is... <coughs> that is rival que puede ser como driblar, ¿verdad? En este caso se utiliza más que todo en los deportes. So, that is the vocabulary that we have for sports. Now, we are going to see what is the vocabulary that we have for seasons. Estos son la, los deportes que estamos trabajando en este tema. Now, we are going to see the seasons. Um, ¿Cuáles son las diferentes eh, estaciones que tenemos nosotros durante el año? In this case, in our country, it's kind of different because we don't have the four eh, seasons. It's kind of different because um, you know that um, we have like two kind of seasons <coughs> that are very... Um, specific here but in other countries we have the four uh, seasons in which we can see some different elements uh, depending on the time así que en el país nosotros no tenemos como los eh, cuatro uh, estaciones pero en otros en otros países sí es bien marcado verdad esa diferencia so we are going to see some things related to seasons so The first thing is the seasons in English are four. And we have winter, spring, summer, and autumn or fall. Son los cuatro nombres, ¿verdad? Winter, que es invierno. Spring, que es la primavera. Summer, que es el verano. Y tenemos autumn or fall, que es el otoño. <laughs> So in this case, fall is used in American English and autumn is used in British English. En este caso, verdad, es dependiendo del de lugar, así es la pronunciación. Eh, más que todo en Estados Unidos se le dice fall, no se le dice autumn, pero en UK sí se utiliza más el autumn. But it is okay, it's the same thing. It is just like uh, depending on the, the kind of English that you want to speak. So in this case, in autumn, 
eh, the letter N at the end is not pronounced. En este caso, cuando estamos pronunciando la palabra otoño, en eh, British English no vamos a pronunciar la N. Así que esa N es just like in, in the reading uh, expressions. So in this case, you know that in English we have different um, rules related to the writing process and the name of the days, the months, and something like that. It is written with a capital letter at the beginning. But in this case, the names of the seasons um, do not start with a capital letter um, unless it appears at the first word in a sentence. <coughs> En este caso, los, eh, las estaciones no se van a escribir con mayúscula, así como se hace con los días de la semana o los meses, a menos que sea al inicio de una oración, pero normalmente no se va a escribir con mayúscula. So, we are going to see a typical vocabulary associated with each season. Vamos a ver algunas eh, palabras eh, típicas que se relacionan con cada uno de estos. Eh, uh, de estas estaciones. Uh, we don't have like a very long list of words. It is kind of short. Es bastante corta, así que no vamos a detenernos mucho en eso, sino que solo son como ejemplos de palabras que podemos encontrar comúnmente eh, relacionadas con los o las estaciones. So we are going to see some words that are related to uh, the vocabulary that we are seeing. So if you are talking about some of these seasons, you are going to uh, use some of those words um, to express different things. Um, <coughs> maybe you are talking about a festival. Um, you are talking about the place that you are living in, uh, how it looks when it is summer or when it is a uh, fall or spring or something like that. So. Este vocabulario nos va a servir para expresar, ¿verdad? Diferentes cosas que podemos ver eh, a través de los diferentes eh, seasons que tenemos en el año. En este caso, nosotros eh, nos enfocamos más que todo en el verano y en el invierno y puede ser un poco en la primavera, pero it is not like um, the first thing that we can think about. So, We're going to see some words. In este caso, I'm going to make a table. Vamos a poner una tabla por acá. Related to the four main seasons. So we have four and two, like this. So the first one is winter, in this case, <laughs> a spring. We have summer and we have autumn. So for winter, we have cold days. We have snow. We have rain. We have umbrella. Gloves. Scarf. Skin and hot drinks. Then for spring, we have warm days, flowers, butterflies, <laughs> nests, rainbows. Gardening, allergies, and baby animals. For summer, we have hot days, beach, vacation, camping. Ice cream, 
stun glasses, stun screen, and a swimming pool. And for the autumn or fall, we have cold days. <laughs> Then we have leaves fall, wind, harvest, rake, acorns, clouds, and the last one, pumpkins. So we have uh, these words that we can uh, see, or maybe when we are talking about the seasons, we can think about these words. So in this case, for the winter, <coughs> we have cold days, días fríos, is no, nieve, que en este caso nosotros no tenemos nada de eso. Rain, lluvia, this one's yes. Um, umbrella, tenemos sombrilla, gloves, guantes, scarf, eh, bufanda, skin, el, el, el esquiar, en este caso nosotros no lo hacemos, and a hot drinks, que son eh, bebidas calientes. Then for the spring, we have the warm days, que son días tibios, eh, un poco calientes, flowers, flores, butterflies, mariposas. Then we have eh, another word that is related to, to the spring, um, that is the nests that in this case son nidos porque hay bastante verdad eh, nidos para esa eh, temporada rainbows que son uh, arcoiris <coughs> gardening que es eh, este trabajo del jardín eh, allergies que son las alergias baby animals que son los animales bebés ya que es una temporada también verdad de producción uh, for summer, we have hot days, días calientes o calurosos, the beach, la playa. We have vacation, in some cases, las vacaciones, camping, acampar, ice cream, el helado, sunglasses, lentes de sol, sunscreen, el protector solar, and a swimming pool, la piscina. And for autumn, we have cold days, que son días um, no fríos, sino que frescos. Eh, lip falls, la caída de las hojas, the wind, el viento, harvest, es la cosecha, the ray, que es el rastrillo. <coughs> then we have on, another thing that is a kind of emblematic or symbolic in this eh, season, que son las acorns o las bellotas, clouds, las nubes, and pumpkins, las calabazas. Now, let me know what other words can you think about when you see the names of the different seasons. ¿Qué otras palabras se le vienen a ustedes a la mente cuando estamos hablando de las estaciones? Ustedes pueden escribir diferentes eh, palabras en el chat que no están en el cuadro, pero que sí les recuerda al invierno, al verano, a, al otoño, a la primavera. Y las vamos a ir agregando en el cuadro. Así que les voy a dar dos o tres minutos para que puedan escribir algunas palabras que a ustedes les recuerdan eh, estas four seasons. Así que pueden escribir algunas palabras que no están agregadas acá que a ustedes les recuerde a cada una de estas eh, estaciones del año. So, we have three minutes to complete that one. So, let's begin.
uh, want to add some words for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Eh, voy a agregar algunas palabras para ustedes. So we are going to end with this um, topic right now. Um, someone uh, helped me with some words. So I appreciate that. Uh, for summer, we have, I mean, where I have summer? Here. We have a swimsuit. We have beer. And we have hotels. Very good. For winter, we have coffee. <clears throat> sweater. Coach. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you. So in this case, um, also we can use the word tea for winter. Uh, an animal that maybe uh, can remember about the winter is the penguin. Maybe the bear. Um, in the case of the spring, uh, we can have colors. Um, also, um, bakery. Handmade. Uh, we can have like flower crowns. These. <laughs> ah, someone said mixed drinks for summer. Ice. For mm -mm. autumn, just maybe uh, camping days. For what? For autumn, a camping day. Uh huh. <laughs> camping, okay. So we have also here candies uh, because of, of um, Halloween, horror movies, for example, horror movies, um, we can say also we can use different words like loneliness in some cases. Um, um, earth colors like uh, orange, brown, um, green, or something like that, red, also. <laughs> so, we are going to uh, have this uh, vocabulary like this. So, in this case, <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me see. Yes, we have a swimsuit for the summer. Ah, we can also use in this case for the summer friends. La palabra amigos, porque también tiene mucho que ver con esto. Um, aquí tenemos este vocabulario, se puede extender más, pero ya es eh, parte de la práctica que ustedes pueden llegar a tener en el futuro. So, now we are going to listen the information that we have on the platform. Vamos a escuchar um, la información que viene. I mean, what? Okay, give me a second. It is not like that complicated, but it is not working right now. Uh, but we are going to listen the information that we have on the video. And we are going to listen a conversation, I think, related to sports. And then we are going to um, complete the knowledge check that we have there. That is the last thing that we are going to do today. 
So I'm accessing to the platform right now, but it is not working. So I don't know. Okay, right now. Now it's working. <laughs> Let me, yes. So this video is related to simple present WH questions. We already learned about the WH questions. So this is like a review of the topic. And then we are going to uh, listen to the conversation. I love sports. Este es como un review, un, un, un resumen, verdad? Un recordatorio del tema de las WH questions. Y también vamos a escuchar la conversación. I love sports para luego pasar a la knowledge check. So let me, oh, but I didn't, 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 didn't. Mm -hmm. I do it in the wrong way. So let me share again the screen. And this is the thing. Okay, let's listen the explanation. Hi everyone, in this class you'll learn how to ask and answer simple present WH questions. Additionally, you'll practice a conversation which illustrates how this topic is used in a real life setting. Let's get started by listening to a conversation which illustrates how this topic is used in a real life setting. So Justin, what do you do in your free time? Well. I love sports. Really? What sports do you like? Hmm. Hockey, baseball, and soccer are my favorites. Wow, you're a really good athlete. When do you play all these sports? Oh, I don't play these sports. I just watch them on television. Do you play sports or watch a lot of sports? Now I would like to show you how to form simple present WH questions. Let's start by analyzing the chart on the screen. Simple present WH questions. What sports do you play? I play hockey and baseball. Who do you play baseball with? I play with some friends from work. We have a team. Where do you play? We play at Hunter Park. How often do you practice? We practice once or twice a week. When do you practice? We practice on Sundays. What time do you start? We start at 10 o'clock in the morning. The goal of using WH questions is to obtain more detailed information from someone. In this case, we want to know everything about the person's response, I play baseball. So we ask, what sports, who, where, how often, when, what time? In order to form simple present WH questions, we can follow this next formula. WH word plus do or does plus the subject plus the verb plus some kind of complement. Let's analyze a couple of questions now. In the example, where do you play? The WH word is where then we add the auxiliary verb do. After that, we add the subject you. Next, we add the verb play. Finally, we add the complement. In this case, we don't have a complement because from our previous question and answer, we understand that we're talking about baseball. There's one particular question that I would like to point out. Who do you play baseball with? 
This type of question may sound a little strange in some languages because of the location of the words who and with. So I would like to explain the following. We can ask this question in two ways. The most common in American English is who do you play baseball with? The other way is by saying with whom do you play baseball? It's not very common, but it's correct and formal to express yourself like this. So to understand the question, who do you play baseball with? Let me write a quick formula. Who plus do or does plus subject plus the verb plus noun plus with. As the example shows, we start our question with who. Next, we put an auxiliary verb, do. After that, the subject, you. Next, we need to add the verb and noun, play baseball. I would like to point out that sometimes it's not necessary to add a noun, just the verb so we can easily say, who do you play with, without adding baseball. Finally, we add with and the question mark. Now it's your turn to practice making simple present WH questions. So this is the conversation that we have there um, in which you can see how to use those uh, vocabulary that we have and how to apply that information in a real life conversation. Aquí es donde se aplica, ¿verdad? Lo de la eh, vida real, donde vamos a aplicar la información que vamos obteniendo. So in this case, there are two people talking about sports and you can see um, how to apply that information. So now eh, it's time to end, but uh, let me do this one first. That is the knowledge check. Solo vamos a terminar con esto y terminamos la sesión de hoy. So, <laughs> we have to complete the conversation with the WH word that is correct. ¿Cuál es la WH word correcta para estas um, eh, preguntas? Tenemos la conversación uno. I watch sports on television every weekend. Yo veo eh, los deportes en la televisión todos los fines de semana. Really? What sports do you like to watch? ¿De verdad? ¿Qué tipo de deportes te gusta mirar? Soccer is my favorite. El, el fútbol es mi favorito. So, aquí viene la pregunta. Do you usually watch soccer? What, when, who, where, and how? ¿Cuál es la WH word that we need for this um, question? When. When do you usually watch soccer? And it says on Sunday afternoons. Next one, and what, when, who, where, and how do you usually wash it at home? Where? Where? And it says, no, at my friend's house, he has a really big television. And the conversation number two, that is the last one. <laughs> What, when, who, where, or how often do you go bike riding? How? How often? Next, uh, it says, oh, about once a month. I love to go bike riding. I go every Sunday. Really? What, when, who, where, and how? When? Usually at about one o'clock. Oh, yeah. Who, when, where, and how? Who? Who? Okay, all of them are correct. Todas están correctas y este es el knowledge check que tenemos acá. So in the first conversation, the first one is when, the second one, 
where. Next one, how. When again, who. Esas son las palabras que estamos utilizando. When, where, how, when, and who. Okay, now, thank you for your participation and, um, and also thank you for your time. It's time to end this session. So we are going to see each other on Monday. Remember that we are not going to work um, on the sessions tomorrow. So we are going to see each other on Monday. No nos vamos a ver el día de mañana. Nos veremos hasta el lunes. So have a really good night and a really good weekend. And see you next Monday. Good night. Good night. Oh, I'm sorry. Good night. 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 Lo siento, voy a, a mover para la que me estaba preguntando para que pueda ver la respuesta. I'm so sorry for moving that. <laughs> This one. So what is the, the question that you need? ¿Cuál es la pregunta? ¿Alguna de estas? Let's see, las primeras, okay. Do it right now. You're welcome. See you. Okay, we are going to end right now. Goodbye. Bye, teacher. Bye. 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 Bye.